What is dependency injection and why does it have a key role in all technologies? DI stands for uh, dependency injection. It has nothing to do with any framework or technology. In an object-oriented uh, language and world, when you design your class, you also specify its relationship with other classes and objects. Maybe your fancy class needs some service of some sort for its functionality. So in this case, your class is dependent and those other classes are its dependencies. Take this car class, for example. It is dependent on engine and gearbox classes as its dependencies in order to be able to operate. The instances of dependencies should be provided to the dependent at some point of its life. This process is called wiring. At this example, before calling the start method on car object, the engine object should be there ready to be ignited and the gearbox should be ready to be geared up. The client code which is using the car object can wire and inject the car dependencies at four distinct points. The first option would be exactly at the time of need. Right when we are calling the method, uh, we pass the needed dependencies as arguments. The second option would be wiring by some setter method on the car object that accepts the instances of uh, the dependencies and it holds on to it until the time of need. The third option would be by setting a public field, which is a very bad idea and breaks a lot of design rules. And the last option, of course, would be to pass the dependencies once and for all at the construction time, which is most of the time the preferred option. You've been doing this construction by hand or manual dependency injection from the first time you instantiated some class with the new keyword in your OO language. Now the question is, do you see any need for a third party tool to do instantiation on your behalf? Maybe manual is old fashioned and you need something uh, to be automated. But let's enumerate what benefits you could gain by using a dependency injector. Well, to be fair, asking for an object from a dependency injector without worrying about its inner dependencies and wiring logic is cool, right? In this example, for example, uh, if you ask dependency injector for a car object, it will provide it uh, to you locked and loaded without you being worried or even aware of its dependencies like engine and gearbox. You could also ask for an instance of a car in your constructor even without being aware of the DI tool. This hiding of initialization phase could help a lot, especially with objects that have large graph of inner dependencies, and especially in languages like Java that due to the lack of name parameters feature and name constructors, situations like constructor pyramid on the pattern is inevitable. This decoupling of instantiation and initialization of objects from their usages could help a lot when it comes to rigidity. In a rigid design, for example, by changing how a class is instantiated, you will also break a lot of other places that are coupled to how the class is instantiated. Another bonus of using dependency injector would be outsourcing the lifecycle management of your object. Because you have already passed the responsibility of instantiation to the injector, it could also call destructor and finalizer methods on your behalf. The dependency injector could also be configured to provide different instances per different contexts and scopes. For example, it could easily provide the very same instance every time or it could provide a new one with each request. Or even better, it could create new instances per context like HTTP request and provide the very same instance uh, to each HTTP request context. 
It is like acting as singleton within a defined scope and context. You could also configure the dependency injector to wire and inject a set of different instances depending on the profile you are executing the application. For example, without touching your code, uh, the dependency injector could inject mock instances instead of the real implementations for testing purposes. And last but not least, because you hand the management of your object's lifecycle to dependency injector, you could ask it to extend your object's behavior. So um, it could add extra functionality and behavior before and after all of the methods uh, inside your object or some of the methods. Uh, and it could define uh, cross-cutting concerns like logging, transaction, or security uh, by intercepting the methods inside your object. So this will be done without the client code being aware of such injected extra behavior and without the need of subclassing and copy-pasting those repetitive logic. This concept is called AOP or aspect-oriented programming. After hearing all these benefits, you might come to conclusion that by using a configured dependency injector, you offload a lot of design difficulties for free. But by looking back to all benefits we enumerated, a curious mind would say that one could get rid of the constructor pyramid anti-pattern, or one could overcome the lack of named parameters features of Java by using the builder pattern of Gang of Four. Or one could decouple and hide all those initialization and instantiation complexity behind a factory or service locator pattern. The scope dependent instances could also be handled by using singleton pattern and prototype pattern of Gang of Four. Or even the shiny AOP, the aspect-oriented programming that we explained, the benefit uh, that you could ask the framework to add extra uh, behavior on your behalf, uh, and, though, and the weaving of that extra behavior could be done through using decorator and proxy patterns of Gang of Four. And by using layered architectures like clean, onion, or hexagonal architecture, because cut, cross cutting concerns are designing it to be in the use case layer, you could easily add extra boilerplate behavior by using template method pattern. Okay, let's just slow down a bit here. During my explanation, I referred to a bunch of well known design and architectural patterns. Patterns like singleton, prototype, factory, proxy, decorator, builder, template method service locator, clean, onion, and hexagonal, and etc. You might not be familiar with these patterns that shape the architecture of your product, but leaning on the magic of dependency injector to bear the design responsibilities on your behalf would be a recipe for disaster. Martin Fowler, the guy who coined the term uh, dependency injection, enumerates the scenarios the one could apply dependency injection, and he criticizes the hype around them. He complains about how people suggest that this tool will solve all testability and design issues. For example, he insists that by uh, the service locator pattern, you could do exactly the same without a tool, but it is the IOC part or the inversion of control part that makes it popular, in which uh, by IOC, the dependencies and extended behaviors are provided out of thin air without the need to access the service locator itself. And we'll show these stuff, the IOC part and the dependency injection part later. Don't get me wrong. Actually, uh, the dependency injector is a powerful tool. And we have got some special usages for it, especially the IOC magic at the framework level and the infrastructure logic. So 
like any other tool, we are going to use it where it fits and where it applies carefully.